you when they tell you to shut off your phone if you didn't listen to them, you know, if you weren't paying attention, you were, you know, and they'll, they'll come over you like, like they're soldiers. You know, it gets like they have the power to get rid of you. You know, sir, I will ask you off this plane. Like, whoa. Joe, stay there. Quick break. Long segment coming up. You want to take calls? Yes. 800 259 We're on the. Phones up the network. Uh, please give me the new call list 800 259 9231. Talk to Joe Rogan here in studio. The police chief will show about 10 15 minutes after. And I'm tempted to bring the police chief in here and uh, ask him police state questions and have Joe jump on him. Oh, wow. Not while I'm here. <laughs> I'll do that over the phone. I don't want to get arrested pulling out of the station. <laughs> I didn't mean physically jump on no, him. No, I know what you mean. I mean, talk to him, jump on him is a bad idea. But I meant that as a joke. The police chief's a nice, friendly guy. You know, I found out from folks that it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? The point is, he goes around at the police station doing Alex Jones imitations. Oh, nice. So it's very, so, I, so we heard the police chief was friendly towards us. I don't really like what he's doing. He does forced blood draws at checkpoints here in Austin. They draw what? And so we called him up, and he agreed to come in the studio last Forced time. blood draws? Yes. Now, why do they do blood draws? Is that a more accurate way of detecting alcohol Yeah, but it violates system? the Fourth Amendment. You're supposed to be able to refuse that, or they're supposed to get a warrant, but they don't. They have these rubber stamp warrants, and they use the Patriot Act to do it. Wow. But he's real nice. He'll give you all these excuses <laughs> for it. He's like, oh, Alex, I like your show. I heard you say this. I heard you do that. And what's his excuse and for taking your blood? And he'll do an Alex Jones imitation. I'll tell you right now. We're gonna... I'm sorry. What's his excuse for taking your blood? To catch the alcohol in it. If you refuse to give a breathalyzer at a checkpoint, which is your Fourth Amendment right, the courts have said what they're doing is illegal. They so just how, go what ahead do they do? do they prick your finger? What no, they, they suck. They, the cops wow. hold you down if need be and suck it out they of an They do an IV? Like they go into your vein? Yeah, like when you take blood when you go That's to the doctor. That's hilarious. Are you going to trust cops to do that? They tried. All, they've done it like in Tucson and Austin and a few other cities. Uh, they tried it in Indiana. Like four or five states are trying it cities in four or five states, and the hospitals refuse. They show up without warrants saying, take this guy's blood, and the hospitals go, What if no. it's like a giant fat guy and you can't get a vein? Cops just keep plunging the needle. Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> All right, Joe. I was so going to say something dirty. But... <laughs> We're on the radio. Well, Joe, after we got caught with that satanic video we did. Yes, the satanic video we did in the bathroom. Of the uh, state capitol house. Yes. Whatever, what is that building? What is that building? Is that a state capitol building? Beautiful building. Oh, man. Smoke pot in that bathroom. I didn't know you did that. <laughs> you didn't do that. We did it on video, man. What are you talking about? I don't smoke pot. I did. You didn't. Joe, your memory. You said it made you paranoid. Joe, we your, have it on video. Your memory is getting clouded. No, we have it on video. You were in the. Uh, it's, no, it's in the Cap City bathroom. We pretended it was the bathroom of the Capitol building. Remember? Yes, yes, for the film. Okay. Exactly. Okay, I was freaking out. No, no, I'm just playing. I was saying, oh my God, SWAT we teams are on there. We did not do that. <laughs> we did not do that. No, we did not do that. Oh my God. You're a little nervous. Well, no, because people are going to. You know, I shouldn't even joke and say it was a secret satanic ceremony. Because uh, because it was it's a video put, sold in stores, but people grab it and again. How could it be a satanic ceremony if we have rubber George Bush masks on? <laughs> no, that they is that I, saying that <laughs> they say they caught me. They say it's secret. <sighs> it's like every, every week we we talk here on air, and then kind of behind the scenes, internet stream only. I'll talk to guests sometimes. And then people grab that and say, look, this was Alex Jones caught secretly saying this as if then that makes it more special. Well, that is the problem, you know, with Disinfo. the Internet. Yeah. Well, also with the Internet, there's so much of you out there. There's so many times that you've talked, so many uh, you know, times you've been on the radio, and all of it is available to dissect and... And, you know, you could always find something. I mean, if you follow me all day, every day, for sure I'm going to be a retard 25, 30 minutes a day. You know, if you chop that up and just only showed that, you would go, God, that guy's retarded. Well, you know? well, they do worse than that. <laughs> I'll be speaking out against racist, and then they edit it together right. where I'm saying, you know, kill black people. Wow. In fact, they've edited it together where I've 
talk about in Tennessee or in Denver when white supremacists tried to get Obama. They edit that together where it's me saying I'm going to get him. Well, it's going to get really squirrely when people can actually imitate your voice in exactly with a computer. And that's not too far away. Well, the government's already got it, but yeah. I'm sure. I mean, sound is, you know, you can manipulate sound. I mean, you look at what they can do with CGI, what they could do with computer graphics and make, you know, computer games look so realistic. And, of course, what they can do in movies. I mean, it's incredible now. I mean, they're going to be able to do that with sound. And at a certain point in time, they are going to be able to say whatever they want and write it out and have a computer literally speak you know so it, it could be an exact replica of uh, Alex Jones voice you won't even be necessary the new world order will will tell everybody what needs to be done they'll have you in here like uh, like uh, what's that dude that died weekend at Bernie's that's yeah. you'll be you'll, you'll have a stick up your ass and you'll be sitting in that chair and they'll just you have know, your lips move well, CGI no, I've decided, style. I've decided George Bush is an all right guy. I've decided I like Obama. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm wearing cement shoes in Lake Tahoe. Exactly. And uh, and Alex Jones just goes on forever. You're all CGI. You know, I used to believe in the New World Order, but it doesn't exist. Now let's cut to the New World Order capital and the world leader. Exactly. All your friends would be like, man, it just doesn't seem like Alex. Well, you know, uh, some of the top techies at, at Wired Magazine and, and some of the top, uh, you know, video analysts in the country, and also in Canada and France, did uh, they uh, analyzed the, uh, that one uh, Bin Laden tape where it looks like kind of the generic uh, anime uh, Final Fantasy model they use, and they just right. put a beard on it, right. and you can see it's not even a good uh, fake. And then they did voice analyzation. Uh, in two different countries and said and had linguists listen and they ran the real bin laden's voice through a voice key and then they ran the fake bin laden voice through and said number one it's not even near the voice key so it's not him wouldn't pass the voice key but then they had linguists listen and said no that's a westerner who did grow up in the middle east probably jordan they can even tell the inflections who's lived in the west most of their life or all their life who then did the voiceover for it so they proved the so audio. some language expert that just recreated it. Yeah, two of them. Two of them. Well, Isn't that something that they proved with one of those beheading videos as well? That yes. those guys were not Arabs. Yes. That those guys were Americans. Yes. The accents were all wrong. And then they also that the body would not have reacted like that. That it would have bled much more when they were cutting his throat. That he was already dead when they did that. Yes. And then there was another video. Uh, that they put out. Which makes sense. I mean, if you want to scare people, you want to scare people, and you, you get some one wacky dude that mm -hmm. wants to go camping in Iraq, let's just cut his head off. Let me tell you one know? more story, folks. Show, throw up a, a video right? graphic. Throw up the prisonplanet.com uh, show. Throw up that graphic. Throw up the, well, I'm going to show folks. If you analyze this graphic, and this is easy technology, and again, Wired Magazine did this. If you analyze this graphic, you will see that it was originally put in in the first generation video layer. Mm -hmm. Okay? With the Bin Laden videos, put out by a group called the Intel Center, which the head guy at it admittedly is the protege of Donald Rumsfeld, who didn't just work at the Pentagon, he worked in psych warfare for two decades at the Pentagon. Wow. So the former head of psych warfare under Rumsfeld when he was previously in the Department of Defense, okay, he puts out a, uh, a, a they're the ones that always release the Bin Laden videos. And then they found that the Al-Qaeda bug was put in in the same video layer as the Intel Center bug. Wow. Well, you know, the, the most hilarious connection ever with uh, our government and illegal things was that crashed plane that had been to Guantanamo Bay several times. Oh, yeah. It was filled with cocaine that crashed in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just genius. That's just beautiful. When people don't want to believe that the government's capable of selling drugs, there's people that see billions and billions of dollars being transferred through the hands of criminals. You don't think they would want to get in on that? You know, a government that willingly lets people sell cigarettes in this country, you know, because they're being paid off. They know that cigarettes kill 400,000 people a year, every year, just in this country alone, and nobody cares. I mean, there's no politicians that are pushing to get cigarettes outlawed. You know, they don't care. They don't mind cocaine getting into this country as long as they can profit on it. And the way they profit that way is just just pure, it's pure profit, you know? I mean, they, they've been doing that forever. If you look at the story of Barry Seal and Mina, Arkansas, you know, and, and what happened with him, the guy was uh, about to testify that he had been smuggling cocaine into the United States forever with the CIA, and they shot him. When they shot him, he had George Bush's home phone number in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, that came out. Yeah, I know. That's. I mean, if you if you look into that story, the government has been selling drugs for a long time. 
it's uh, quite interesting that we're in a war on drugs when it's very possible that the government is probably the number one dis distrib distributor of cocaine in this, in this whole country. And heroin. You know? Well, you notice yeah, that after heroin. they went into Afghanistan, record, uh, within two years, record amount of opium coming out of Afghanistan. Yeah, I mean, isn't that like a gigantic percentage of the world's opium supplies is all from Afghanistan? Yeah, 80%. Yeah, they controlled that stuff. I mean, if they control, why would they? There's just, you're not going to stop junkies. People are addicted to opiates. They're going to stay addicted.